Hey guys, welcome back to Another Round Table. My name is Adam, and with me today I have Victor, Hi, Juan. Rusmin, and Kenny. Hi, Ron. You Hi. are the fifth person joining us on this round table, and today we're going to discuss whether Bitcoin will become the new digital gold. So recently, Bitcoin's price has really gone up skyward and is about over 30,000 USD per Bitcoin. So I think 33,000 at this point in time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think Bitcoin has been on quite a bit of a roller coaster over the past few years. I mean, all of us remember Bitcoin in 2017 when it hit like a peak of about 20, almost $20,000 at that point in time. And it just came crashing down. A lot of retail money was yeah. in that, you know, investing in Bitcoin at this point. And no one really knew whether Bitcoin would come back. Right, but mm. it has come back with a vengeance recently. It is a really sky high price. So, guys, you know what happened? Why is Bitcoin all going up so high all of a sudden? So, Adam, it's very hard to pinpoint what exactly happened. You know, like, mm-hmm. but the thing is, Bitcoin is very illiquid because they call it Bitcoin wills. Right, two percent of the Bitcoin owners actually own ninety five percent of the bitcoins. So, any drastic increase in demand will cause the price to go up by a lot. And of course, recently, the idea that most hedge fund managers and financial institutions are actually interested or starting to have interest in Bitcoin and seeing it as an alternative form of gold. That's why they are rushing in and of course you have retail investors who are very bent on Mm -hmm. making 10 times or 100 times their money because they believe it will go up in the next couple of years so they are also rushing it the same door and that causes the price to go up by a lot yeah and as increasingly we're also seeing a lot of adoptions on uh, bitcoin Uh, in terms of exchange you have seen uh, paypal actually get into bitcoin Mm. Uh, they actually allow bitcoin uh, users or investors to actually buy and sell on their platform and also locally we also have dbs that they're going to open up an exchange for the cryptocurrency right mm-hmm. so that is actually uh, pretty much there's an increase in terms of uh, adoption and last year and on last year Square the company that's actually listed in the US actually bought about close to 15 million so there's actually a lot more uh, adoption uh, increasing in terms of popularity I think that perhaps could explain the reason why it has gone up in terms of share price and that is actually from the demand side right so the supply side if you look at the bitcoin it still hasn't increased that much okay? in fact the total number of uh, bitcoins in our lifetime is going to be 21 million right yeah. so far in terms of circulation currently we are looking at about 18.6 a million right and out of which can you say that you know the two percent account actually control about 95% of the coins in the market and 20% of it actually they estimated that these are the number of users who have lost their Bitcoin right I mean we have heard of Stephen Thomas who actually lost about 7,000 Bitcoin right today I think he is potentially worth hundreds of millions of dollars I have no right? idea how you can live <laughs> losing 7,000 Bitcoin oh man <laughs> and he still have two more trials for his password yeah I read the article so basically he's, he has Bitcoin in his hard drive somewhere yeah and he cause he just can't remember the password to access that hard drive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if he, he has two more guesses left, if he messes that up, the data is gone. Gone. And yeah, that's that is, it. That's really painful. So yeah, I, I don't yeah. know what I'm gonna do if I were him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm glad I'm not in that position. So yeah. generally basically it all boils down to a limited supply and there's an increase of demand yeah. that yeah. caused the surge in terms of uh, share price for Bitcoin. So I think there are a few factors coming in together. There's institutional money, yeah. there's demand, there's more widespread adoption, uh, acceptance of Bitcoin. But I think I wanna bring up this part with about 2% of accounts. This is according to an article by Bloomberg, Bloomberg Fortune yeah. mm. here and there where 2% of accounts command 95% of the supply. Yeah. So do you think there's a possibility of price manipulation in this sense? That these people could be actually bringing the price up mm. and they could go really, really high and then it's basically a classic pump and dump. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Do you think there's a possibility? I that? think there's a possibility for price manipulation because first there's already a limited supply and like you say, if the two percent really holds, you know, majority of the uh, Bitcoin supply, they can just re- release it slowly, you know. Yeah, so it's easy to manipulate the prices because uh, 78% of the Bitcoin circulation is actually illiquid. It's not basically yep. not moving. But mm-hmm. there's nothing stopping from the 2% from working with each other yeah. to manipulate the price, basically yeah. buying to cre- create a price surge and maybe slowly releasing uh, to cash out of the Bitcoin and selling it to retail yeah. investors. Someone actually pointed out that if you just sell 150 Bitcoin, uh, it will result in a 10% drop in price. So that kind of like, you know, tell you that this is highly liquid for mm-hmm. Bitcoin yep. market. And this kind of reminds me of, you know, investing in the stock market when you look at some of the penny stock, you know, like Blue Mon, which happens uh, many years ago. In Singapore. Uh, in Singapore. 
people can actually manipulate this kind of penny stock because it's highly illiquid and the prices yeah. are low and it's very easy for you to have few major shareholders to come together and start to manipulate the prices by selling to each other i mean this is kind of like how people manipulate yeah. a penny stock. yeah and yeah. Uh, moreover you know uh, in bitcoin right all those transactions are anonymous mm -hmm. you don't know yeah. so so you yeah. don't know whether you know is are they gang up together, you know, to sell to so each no other? No one really up. knows yeah. if this is happening, but this, the basically the stats just show you that two percent of accounts control yeah. that amount of supply. And as a if you're a retail investor yourself, it's something that you probably want to take note of. That could be yeah. a yeah. possibility, right? So I want to move on. You know, a lot of the reasons why people think that Bitcoin, I mean, they're speculating on it and prices are going up is because they think that Bitcoin could one day become currency, it could replace fiat currency. It could be the way that we transact all our transactions and spend money. Do you think that's going to happen? Will Bitcoin ever become currency, become money? I think one of the greatest hurdles is basically uh, government regulation because governments doesn't want that to interfere with them setting monetary policies because for them, it's all about controlling the money supply so that they can think of with the interest rate to control inflation, consumption, growth, and liquidity. So I think that's a big issue there. And in terms of transaction-wise, it's actually very difficult because it takes about 10 minutes for them to lock a transaction and they only can make about four transactions per, per second, per second this right? Is for Bitcoin, right? Uh, for Bitcoin. Bitcoin. But then uh, as opposed to Visa, Visa processes about 65,000 uh, transactions, transactions per transition. second. And you haven't include like Amex and, and MasterCard. So for them to get up to speed and to transact at that scale will take them a long time or they have to find an alternative solution to mm -hmm. keep up with that demand. I think for Bitcoin to become a digital currency, it's not going to happen in our lifetime. <laughs> 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 currency, for a currency to be a so-called, to be a replacement of yeah. a digital currency, it has need to fulfill two things, right? One, the first one is what Kenny mentioned, be able to transact fast. Mm -hmm. Secondly, they must be able to store a value, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say today we transact on one Bitcoin, I pass it to you one Bitcoin. And you know that tomorrow is going to stay the same more or less the same, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost mm -hmm. like our fiat currency. I pass you $1, tomorrow you know that it's going to worth $1. Of course, inflation will kick in over time, mm. but that is actually kind of slow, very slow. Yep. Mm. You, know, you know that there's a predictability involved. But the thing with Bitcoin is that you can see the prices can go up 10%, down yeah. 30%. It's quite volatile for it's, Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It's actually very volatile, yeah. right? Very volatile. Yeah. 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 Very volatile. So, I mean, yeah. if you think that Bitcoin is going to go up in value the next month, you're not going to spend it. Yeah. Mm. You're going to hold on to it. And if you're going to yeah. hold on to it, it doesn't become currency because yeah. you're not going to, you don't want to use it. It's like the guy who bought, um, the very first guy who transacted on Bitcoin, he bought a pizza. Mm. It was, uh, how many Bitcoins was that? 10,000 10, Bitcoin. 10, 10, Bitcoin. <laughs> 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 he spent 10,000 Bitcoins for a pizza. So at today's yeah. prices, that would be a really expensive pizza. I mean, how, how much is that? 300 million. 300 million? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can do the math on that. Yeah, 300 million, million, yeah, yeah, yeah. 300 million, yes. Very expensive pizza. So if, you know, if that's, that's a clear example of something that if it's going to, the, the value is just going to go up and down, there's no way you want to spend it. So, and of course, I think the, the heart, cap on the, the the fact that it's only four transactions per second worldwide it's yeah. not going to work right because yeah. you're spending yeah. all the time there's so many transactions going on every single day in yeah. every, everywhere so, so the question yeah. is would you sell your house and accept your payment in bitcoins man uh, yeah but the thing is i mean if you, you guys are all business owners and everything would you just one day change everything and transact in bitcoins yeah. even right now right yeah. you're thinking about it as a store of value as money yeah. currency right the answer the answer is no uh, of course you might be lucky maybe three months down the road yeah. you might double whatever yeah. Yeah. your revenue right yeah. that you get from bitcoin but since everything is going up so the question is when will you exceed yeah Mm -hmm. something like that you know yeah. it's just mentally you just will not sell and right. and people will sell only when it comes down but also at the same time whatever you get in value will probably be discounted in half if people decided that this is not not the currency yeah, of, yeah. so or, i think the thing of big point is that because everyone kind of agrees that there's they accept it it's like yes. a, you know because it's valuable to you it's valuable to me it becomes valuable to everyone's the kind of like network yeah. effect that's going on but the moment everyone just kind of like just jumps off that standard then Bitcoin becomes, in a sense, almost worthless, yeah. right? Because yeah. we all place value in it. That's why there's value in it. Yeah. Even though PayPal uh, does allows you to buy and sell uh, Bitcoin, they doesn't accept uh, Bitcoin as a payment. Okay. Yet. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So oh. it's just an exchange for them to make money. It's just like you know they're competing with Square, so mm -hmm. they want to enter into that market yep. as well. So, so I think there are a few hurdles in place that actually kind of like it makes it really hard for Bitcoin to become a currency. 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 Yes. But then the question could be: Will Bitcoin become 
digital gold. So I think a lot of articles have come up recently where, you know, Bitcoin could be the new gold, right? Yep. There's a, yeah. You know, there's a way of a store of value. It's something you can hedge your investments again. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Is there a potential for Bitcoin to become digital gold? I think to be a digital gold, right? I mean, a lot of when investors, they invest and they want to uh, invest in gold is because they want to hedge against inflation and also is also want to hedge against the uh, be counter cyclical against the equities, you know. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, Bitcoin actually is very quite correlated to equities, mm-hmm. right? So I don't know whether it will become the new digital gold, but I still prefer holding the physical gold compared to something that is mm-hmm. in the computer and all this. But of course, you can have gold, you can have silver. It's just maybe probably co-assist in the same thing. It could right? become a, just another different Assets, asset class. Yeah. class. It doesn't replace gold, yeah. mm-hmm. but it could become digital gold. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What, what do you guys think yourself? Uh, I think there's still a possibility uh, as long as uh, all of us start to believe that you know, yeah. Bitcoin uh, is a way for you to you know invest into digital gold as, as a way. Uh, and because the thing about Bitcoin is that the term of supply is similar, very similar to gold, right? It's yep. limited in terms of supply and they only have about 21 million yep. in our lifetime in terms of supply for Bitcoin. So as long as people start to believe that, you know, one Bitcoin is worth X amount of money and the more people believe it, the price of Bitcoin should continue to appreciate over time. I mean, that's the main thesis that I think people who buy into Bitcoin, uh, they are no longer so-called subscribed to the idea of Bitcoin is going to be a digital currency in the future because that was the, the initial idea mm-hmm. to to five years ago uh, it caused the price to surge all the way to twenty thousand dollars but mm-hmm. it didn't work out right mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden i think this year we are seeing the revival of bitcoin in terms of prices mainly because people or even the institutional investors are thinking that bitcoin is going to be a digital gold and they're actually buying into that and they kind of did the valuations and comparing with gold because they are very similar characteristics except that bitcoin of course there's nothing in it. Uh, it's you know, digital. Yeah. Digital, you know, yeah. it's just one and zeros. Yeah. I mean, actually, but a lot of our money supply yeah. is actually digital. Precisely. Yeah. 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 So there is a possibility as long as all of us start to believe that it can replace the goal. I think what most people think is they will strike goal. <laughs> they will strike goal. So? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I think everyone believes that it will, uh, it will become like 10x or 100x in the future. And then I think everyone is piling in into it. And of course, I think it, it only can become a store of value once it becomes stable. I think maybe if it's not so concentrated in the 2%, but rather uh, everyone holds mm-hmm. uh, Bitcoin yeah. and then maybe it will fluctuate based on demand, uh, like almost like gold, right? No, yeah. Not one yeah. person owns like the yeah. majority yeah. of the gold or something like that. Yeah. So. And as long as some of the index creator ETF, they start to you know create this kind of uh, cryptocurrency kind of ETF, I mean, that will increase the demand in the market because that will attract a lot of fund flow. Uh, and because that is essentially what happened to gold ETF, right? When they first created in 2004, gold prices back then was only $400 US dollars, right? Per mm-hmm. ounce, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And, and then today we are looking at about $2,000 an ounce, mm-hmm. right? So a lot of factors have to come into play before Bitcoin become a digital gold. It depends on how many people will want to adopt or agree that, you know, this is going to be a new form of digital gold. Yeah, I find it very yeah. interesting that how <laughs> humans actually pick things to agree upon it. This is valuable <laughs> because the, a lot of, like, for now in this modern world, we kind of think of gold as a real store of value that's, that's real intrinsic value. Mm. But gold wasn't always valued everywhere around the world. So, for example, when the Spanish came to the new world where the Aztecs were and all that, the Aztecs didn't value gold. They used it for their jewelry, they knew of its properties, but they didn't really use it as a store of Stop. wealth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were using cacao beans instead, mm-hmm. as currency and all that. Yeah. So, but the moment the Spanish came, they wanted to like get all the gold that they could find in you know the Aztec Empire. And all of a sudden, the Aztecs started to value gold as well yeah. mm-hmm. because they could sell it to the Spanish and then get whatever they want in return. So that becomes like, because you agree that it's valuable, I think it's valuable as well. And that's what's happening with, that's Bitcoin. what happened with gold. Mm. And that's what's happening with Bitcoin. Right now. Right now. Mm. Yeah, so things can really just, we all of us just agree that it's valuable. I mean, some, it's the same argument can, yeah. that could be made for fiat currency as well. It's yeah. actually just yeah. a piece of paper or a number yeah. on the screen, but because we're just backed by what we believe is the power of the US economy or this China, economy yeah. or that country mm. or China, whatever it is, we think that that piece of paper is valuable. Yeah. It's backed yep. on that. Yeah. And they all have, we all have to agree that there is value in that. So that's the, that's the thesis for, I think, Bitcoin at this point in time. Yeah, and yep. it's more, or more like a, a hedge in the event where fiat currency were to... Mm-hmm. Collapse in know. our yeah. current era, yeah. which yeah. is it's almost 
I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> it's very low probability kind of event. But mm. even then, don't think Bitcoin could replace <laughs> the, the yeah. properties of well, fiat currency, yeah. right? You need yeah, the yeah. inflation, you need the control yeah. of monetary mm. policy and all that. Yeah. It's not as simple as just... Actually, when that happens, the world will be in very chaotic. Uh, oh, yeah. Rice is more valuable. I think Bitcoin yeah. is... <laughs> <laughs> food and water and food shelter and, water. and land. Yeah, yeah, because it'll be yeah. chaotic at the time. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I think Bitcoin is highly dependent on people's perception of value. So it's Im- almost the same as tulip mania where people believe tulips are, are worth a lot. Yeah. And after yep. when people yeah. lose interest in mm-hmm. the tulips and that's where everything came down yeah. the tulips become worth it's just a plant right yeah. 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 yeah so that was the very first bubble in history right yeah, yeah yes yeah. that's yeah. the very first Sorry. bubble <laughs> <laughs> but we're not saying that bitcoin is a bubble I mean we're yeah. just listing yeah. all the factors yeah. that what could happen for or what needs to happen for bitcoin to become accepted as the new standard of gold new digital gold yes, in a yes. sense yeah, and right. we're just we, I guess we're in the middle of history in this point in time yeah. we don't really yeah. know but I think uh, the question is will you actually you know, knowing that, would you actually invest or buy in Bitcoin at this point in time? Yeah, I mean, you, you can buy into any assets, you know, mm-hmm. as long as you know how to manage your risk, right? So uh, right now, if you look at Bitcoin, it's quite a speculative asset because there's a lot of uncertainty moving forward for uh, for Bitcoin, whether you become currency, whether you become a digital gold. But if you still want to write on this trend of Bitcoin, right, I think you should learn how to manage your risk, you know, instead of like all in in Bitcoin, you should be at least like 1% or less of your portfolio in Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin went up multiple four, you still make money. Mm-hmm. But it didn't do well, it does not burn your pockets, you know. Okay, but of course, personally, I, w- I won't buy Bitcoin. Yeah. So no harm buying Bitcoin, yeah, but yeah. make sure you manage your risk yeah. in your, you know, how yeah. much of your assets yeah, is correct. that. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm, I don't really buy into very speculative assets. Yeah. I okay. always like to buy so, into assets that yeah. give cash flow. What about you guys? Yeah. Mm, I personally would not buy uh, Bitcoin because it doesn't create any economic activity. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I personally prefer to invest in companies, uh, and uh, generally those companies they are doing something you know for the humanities. So right? they create values. You know, they they can provide it's like Amazon. You know, it's a place where you can shop, mm-hmm. right? Deliver things to your house at the convenience, and these are the kind of uh, uh, investment that I will put my money in. But the thing with Bitcoin is that it doesn't do anything. Right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's just uh, it's like gold. Yeah. Go right, yeah. yeah same thing. Uh, go yeah. at least you can put it There's on. There's some <laughs> economic value because of the yes, properties yeah. of the metal and all that, but still, yeah, yeah. It just so it's almost there. like a zero sum game to me yeah. for uh, a Bitcoin to invest in Bitcoin. So I don't really invest in it. But for people who really believe that it's going to replace a uh, gold or it could be alternative assets in the future. I mean, generally you can place like what Victor say, you know, a small percentage of your portfolio on that. Don't be that crazy guy, put 100% in Bitcoin. <laughs> Don't sell all your, all your houses, you know, <laughs> your property or everything. You know? Well, uh, someone's crazy that actually uh, sold yeah. everything. I remember uh, that when Bitcoin was hitting as high as $20,000, yeah. uh, okay. he sold everything and then buy into yeah. Bitcoin. Right? Today, okay. he looks like a genius. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He can buy back multiple houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. I mean, I mean, we, we, were, we were introduced to Bitcoin when... Crazy we, or not, depends well, yeah. on the price, right? Depends <laughs> on the price, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's way too speculative, yeah. right? I mean, you, you know that even Square, uh, as a company that bought Bitcoin, it's just 1% of their total assets value, right? Mm-hmm. And that is kind of like, you know, how they manage the risk. If 1% fail, it's okay. It's not going to destroy the whole value, right? As mm-hmm. a portfolio manager yourself, you got to know how to manage your risk, as what Victor mentioned, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Same here, I think I, I agree with Rusmin because... I will not invest because I, I don't like the idea that the success of my investment is depending on predicting other people's behavior, their perception okay. of value. If this their perception of value increases, more and more people buy and it goes up. And of, of course, it's already hard enough to uh, predict how much a uh, business will make in, or produce in the future, right? Yeah. And that itself, I think it has value because if people perceive that there's a mistake in, in thinking that oh, how much they will produce and that, that gives me value, it, at the end of the day, when it's traded at a lower price, I purchase the business out whole I, I'm getting value for it. There's something that's backing the price. Yep. But when it comes to uh, Bitcoin, there's nothing backing the price. So yep. it's Basically very just everyone's risky. everyone's agreement yeah. that is yeah. valuable. Yeah. 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 And imagine you're paying so much money for, for something, a currency that's created out of yeah. nothing. Yeah. There's like, no fundamental. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Just but of course, these are yeah. all uh, based on our own perspective of yep. opinions yeah. and all this, right? But then but I think... Yeah. Yeah. I also don't want to give you guys the idea that we are shooting Bitcoin down or something. So there's, there's no, no idea. We're just, just like, that's our point of view. And, and of course, yeah. if you disagree, then... Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I still have so friends who yeah. bought Bitcoin and they still make money. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, so yeah, so yeah. it's just that yeah. how you manage your risk. That's we all. know yeah. someone who's made quite a bit in Bitcoin. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. Quite a bit, actually. <laughs> I won't say how much, but anyway. Yeah. Quite, yeah, a quite a bit. Quite a bit. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, yeah. So for myself, I would see... I wouldn't. Yeah, I was. I think it's pretty much the same. If I would invest in Bitcoin, it would be a small percentage of like mm. my portfolio. It's kind of like buying 
your lot the lottery, right? You wouldn't sell your house and buy <laughs> you buy everything in the lottery. I hope you yeah. strike first price, yeah. right? You just you just buy a bit, and then if you hit that, great. So I would take the same approach when it comes to Bitcoin. If, yeah. you, if you wanted to buy Bitcoin, there's nothing wrong with that. It could be an asset for the future and you believe in its properties and what it could happen, then go ahead and put something in it. And you could very well turn out right. And if not, well, you just kind of like lose that lottery ticket. You write it off. It's fine. Yeah. 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 So I think that's the way I would approach Bitcoin as well. So, I mean, I think I think all of us are pretty much on the same yep. page when it comes to that. So no recommendation to buy or sell Bitcoin at this point. <laughs> this is a video, we are just scratching the surface. We want to discuss whether you know it's going to be the new digital goal and all that. So I hope you've learned something. Uh, thank you guys for yep. being, being at this round table. I think uh, we all learned something today. And if you like this uh, roundtable, feel free to like it, you know, and share this with your friends, especially those who are you know, looking at Bitcoin and all that. And subscribe to our channel. So we have many more roundtables coming up and we want to get them to you as fresh as possible. And any questions and comments you want to you know, discuss with us, put them in the comment section and we'll have a conversation with you as well. So once again, thank you for joining us. My name is Adam. This is Victor, Rusman, Kenny. Thank you. You are the fifth person joining us. And thank you so much for being here. <laughs>